Hey guys, Matt Guzman here, back with another video, and today is going to be about how to get the Archaeology Merit Badge. So, requirement one says, tell what archaeology is. Um, you want to have a good solid foundation of what archaeology actually is, because the rest of the requirement says to explain to your counselor how it differs and it relates to fields of study such as anthropology, geology, paleontology, and history, and explain how archaeology is different than artifact collecting or treasure hunting. So archaeology is a study of human history and prehistory through the excavation of sites and the analysis of artifacts and other physical remains. Um, it's more, mostly the recovery and analysis of material culture. Uh, it's to try to see if they can consider what their lifestyle would have been like of the people of that area, what um, different aspects of how they lived. Uh, you know, just studying of the history of the people who live there and what maybe happened to their society. Moving on to requirement number two, it says to describe each of the following steps of the archaeological process. Now there's a lot, so the steps of the process are site location, development and background research and a research design, site survey and field work, artifact identification and examination, uh, interpretation, preservation, and information sharing. It's a lot of Asians, but those are the steps of the archaeological process that you have to describe. Requirement number three says to describe at least two ways in which archaeologists determine the age of sites, structures, or artifacts, and explain what absolute dating and relative dating are. Um, the two ways are those, absolute dating and relative dating, and there is a very big difference between them. Um, absolute dating, I'm pretty sure, has to do with radioactivity and carbon dating, stuff like that. Relative dating is when they look at the layers in which they found them and determine the age between... Uh, how deep they were in the ground, or maybe they find some objects that are in a lower, like, you know, just stuff like that. They find their relative dates of wh wh when they existed based on the level at which they were found. Requirement number four says to learn about a combined total of five archaeological sites located both within and outside the United States. Uh, when you learn about those five different archaeological sites, 4A says, for each of the site you research, point it out on a map and explain how it was discovered. Describe some of the information about the past that has been found at each site. And also explain how information gained from the study of sites answers questions archaeologists are asking. And explain how the information may be important to modern people. And lastly for 4A, compare the relative ages of the sites you research. During the summer of 2019, my dad purposely took me to historical sites like these where they had archaeological elements that would help me in completing this requirement, which also helped hand in hand with the Indian Lore Merit Badge. We kind of did this uh, summer vacation at these certain places in order to get these requirements done, and a lot of the places had these archaeological elements that would help me in getting these requirements. And doing all that makes it easier to complete for B which says to choose one of those sites you picked and give a short presentation about your findings to a Cub Scout pack, your scout troop, your school class, or another group. Uh, another group meaning like a, your family, a youth group, just anywhere where you can present it to someone. So I presented it to my family. And of course, since I visited a lot of the places that I chose, uh, I chose one of the places that I visited, which was Mammoth Cave. And I featured one of the parts of Mammoth Cave in my How to Get the Railroading Merit Badge video uh, because... A mammoth cave is also a park trail where there's a train car, and that train car counted as a requirement for a railroading. So as you can see, while working on these different badges, I was able to incorporate them together, which is a very helpful tip in scouting. You can try to put multiple things into the efficiency of the same requirements. So for the short presentation, just keep it simple, talk about the elements that were there at the places, and it's kind of like a simple description of just what the place is, and it's also probably good to point out some archaeological elements, you know, because it's for the archaeology badge. Moving on to requirement number five, five A says to learn about federal laws and international conventions that protect archaeological sites. Find if your state, county, or local government has regulations for archaeological or historic sites. 5B says to identify a national, international, or local organization that helps to protect archaeological sites. Uh, 6A, explain why it is important to protect archaeological sites. 6B, explain what people should do if they think they have found an artifact. Uh, 6C says to describe the ways in which you can be a protector of the past. 7 says to do one of the following and discuss your findings with your counselor. 
I'm pretty sure there are three different options, but they're all really short, so I'll list them. I did 7A, which says to visit a museum to observe how artifacts aid in conveying history. So the museum that I went to was Cahokia, where they have the Cahokia Mounds, and it's supposed to be the largest prehistoric earthen mound in North America. And this was also another place that I went to on my summer vacation. And they had a museum there that showed all the artifacts, uh, how it was excavated, and using what they had found there, which they displayed in these little cases. They also made this diorama of how civilization uh, most likely would have been at those at that time. They also had a bunch of dioramas and stuff and maps of the place now and the place before. So it's a really cool museum and then they let you walk up to the top of the mound. So all this helps in completing the requirement which says to observe how artifacts aid in conveying history. Well the artifacts there showed how they figured out what civilization was like there and what the purpose of the mound. So it's pretty cool and I got the requirement done. 7b says to present to your counselor a significant family artifact and or heirloom and discuss its history and if you don't like those 7c uh, it's a pretty good option says to make a list of the trash your family throws out during one week and discuss what archaeologists might learn about you and your family if they found your trash a thousand years from now which is pretty interesting based on like you know how uh, your lifestyle would have been if people just looked at your trash uh 8 says to do either A or B of the following, but both options are really insanely long, so I'm just going to show them on this website. So at BoyScoutTrail.com, which I will link in the description, it has a full list of all the requirements for the Archaeology Merit Badge. 8A and 8B are insanely long, as you can see here, so I'm not going to read the entire thing. You can read it if you want by pausing the video, but basically 8A is doing an actual archaeologist site uh, where you have to do a project for at least eight hours. Uh, you have to talk about the steps of the archaeological inquiry and stuff like that. 8B is a simulation of an archaeological project that is designed by an actual qualified archaeologist. But you're supposed to describe the features of the site, uh, the different aspects of it. With 8A, it's an actual project that you have to do for at least eight hours where you analyze and uh, you can have a study. 8B is more theoretical with the simulation where you're explaining the results and how it would be affected with your analysis based on like the archaeological site and the steps of an archaeological process. All right, moving on to number nine. It says, under the supervision of a qualified archaeologist or instructor, do one of the following. Uh, 9A says to help prepare an archaeological exhibit for a display in a museum, visitor center, school, or other public area. Uh, the other option, 9B, says to use the methods of experimental archaeology to recreate an item or to practice a skill from the past. Write a brief report explaining the experiment and its results. Requirement number 10 says to research groups of people who lived in your area more than a thousand, a thousand, gosh, more than a hundred years ago. This also coincides with Indian lore. It has a similar requirement, uh, and this one says to learn about the ways of life, including housing, clothing, arts and crafts, tools, trade and markets, rituals, religions, diets, and their relationships with other groups in the area. Also, describe what to expect to find at an archaeological site where these people lived and explain how these people influenced your current community. Number 11, which is the last requirement, is to identify three career opportunities in archaeology. Uh, pick one and explain how to prepare for such a career. And discuss with your counselor what education and training are required and explain why this profession might interest you. And that is it for this badge. Thank you for watching my video on how to get the Archaeology Merit Badge. If you did enjoy, please like it. Turn on notifications on my channel and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.